collecting indigo leaves. Why not just let everybody in right now, just to witness this? Hopefully nothing happens with Abu Bakr on his roof. Can you guys make sure you're muted as you're coming in too? Oh, I can mute you too. Right? Go to the menu. Yeah. Just keep muting yourselves. Oh, you guys are doing great. Awesome. Hello, everyone. <laughs> if you are in, good evening, good morning. I'm just collecting a few leaves of Philonipteracea in the sense. And I will be then back to you. Looks beautiful. Yeah, they're beautiful young leaves now after a few rains. We have a uh, beautiful leaves of uh, Philonyptera coming. And um, I don't need to collect that much, but just few to be able to. So hello, everyone. I was saying that for today's Feedback Friday, I would like to introduce you to some of my material. And of course, one of the main material in this studio is uh, the indigo. And uh, we are lucky that uh, this is the beginning of the rainy season now. And we had few rain already. And uh, after those uh, two rains, we have some um, beautiful young leaves of uh, Philonyptera cnsian coming. Now I'm collecting those leaves, some of those leaves, to just be able to show you the, the, the magic or the alchemy of uh, this uh, native plant from West Africa, Philonyptera senescent. So I don't need that much, but I'm collecting few few leaves, and then we can have uh, the first experience together with uh, those leaves. So. And uh, it's very beautiful. And we have something interesting also. I don't know if you can see. We have, uh, I don't know if you can hear those birds as well. And uh, we have some weaver, bird weavers, weaver birds, I don't know how to call them, with beautiful nest. And this is a sign of luck when the birds choose your place to, to have their nest. And because it's also the rainy season, and we have some beautiful frangipani flower here, I can share with you. So I'm going to come down. I think I have enough leaves. I'm going to come down and then um, you will see me in a few minutes. Thank you. <laughs> so that was basically the best intro we have ever had. <laughs> mic drop. Total mic drop. Thank you, Abu Bakar. <laughs> He's climbing down a, a ladder, so he turned off his video, and we can just kind of hold our breaths to wait for him to uh, get down safely. But <laughs> welcome to Feedback Friday. I'll be right back to myself. I have to grab my script. <laughs> Back Friday, that just changes weekly. We throw you curveballs when we can. All right. Uh, yeah, just waiting for Abu Bakr. Amy, you look better today than I saw you the Thank other you, day. Betsy. Oh Last week, I didn't know I was going to get COVID. I currently have COVID and got it on Monday. So I'm day five. Happy to be with you. <laughs> I've got a lot of makeup under my eyes so I could look normal. But yeah, thanks Betsy. 
but it was a fairly mild case, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why today I'm fully tasting rubbing alcohol. I, it's all I can smell is rubbing alcohol and all I can taste is rubbing alcohol. Right. It's very weird. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. Um, are we going to go ahead and- Can you one? hear me now? Okay. Here you yep. are. Hello, Hello, Abu Bakar. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. So I'm safe and I'm down. Okay. Good. We can't see you. And uh, he's going to go to his side. Here I am. Where? Abu Bakar, you need to turn on your camera. <laughs> and uh, can you see? There we go. Now, can you see my harvest? There, there, yes. Okay. Thank you. Here is my harvest. Excellent. And uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, so Abu Bakar. It's Abu Bakar. been a, an adventure to, to go and collect a few leaves. And um, I wanted to start before I introduce some of my team or some of uh, the process in this studio. I think it was very important to be able to show you the, the magic or the alchemy of uh, this substance, um, indigo. So the Philoneptoracean scent, because it's a very important uh, part of our, of our work here, making uh, dyes with this, um, these green leaves. So something I have to say, if you can hear me, so you can see those uh, beautiful green tender leaves. And this is the leaves I have, uh, have been introduced to indigo for the first time when I was seven years old and um, I have to show you my uh, fingers who are completely clear uh, like uh, clean if I can say like that and I'm going to start crushing the leaves so then you can see this um, the alchemy or the magic of uh, I need to find a better light okay so maybe this light is not too bad okay so after the, the harvest, now I'm crushing in my hand these leaves. I'm taking more. I have never done what I'm doing here. So my apologies, it's difficult to move with the camera, but um, so I think you will get to see the maximum things like I would like to show you today. So as you can see, you can see already my hand, my finger changing the color of my finger. You can see. So this species is really high, high indigotin contain. And the only way we process those leaves is just by pounding the leaves to reduce the mass of leaves and getting the indigo balls. It's just enough when we dry those balls and when we need to make the fermentation vats, just we use those dried bowls. So I don't know if you can see my, uh, my hand here. In a few, few minutes, few seconds, maybe even I can say. And they will need some more time to oxidize. But you will see my hand will be completely stained with uh, with this uh, dye stuff. I can say that uh, this is the, the archaic way to dye. And of course, you can imagine for the young boy of seven years old, seeing this magic, how from green leaves we can make blue. And this is also the archaic way if we want to dye dying with fresh leaves. And then 
the genius of the ancestor was by uh, redu reducing the mass of leaves, we can create a concentration and use for the fermentation leaves vats. I think this is enough I, and everybody can, can see these green leaves turning my hand completely blue. Okay, so this experience at the first time was shown to me not because of the, the, the tinctorial aspect of the plant, but because it was especially an amazing antiseptic and, the, and the, an anti-inflammatory by just crushing like this. If you have any wounds, you just apply on the wounds as a cataplast to heal the wounds. So I've been introduced to that plant as a medicinal plant before I even knew that it was a, a dye plant. So now everyone can see this uh, magic happening. Okay. So thank you for that. And um, I'm moving here to go to, to show you more of uh, the material. And I will come back with uh, some of my assistants to show you what they are doing. And then if we have time enough, I can also take you to my um, dye vat and do some, uh, some demo. Okay, so here I'm coming and showing you, this is the, the dry poles. I don't know if you can still hear me. Can you still hear me? Hello. Yes, yes Abu Bakar. Okay, so I'm going maybe to mute on uh, my computer and then I, I want just a moment. I think we have you on here, Abu Bakar. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, fantastic. Oh, you're so over here now. Oh. I'm back here to show you the, the indigo balls after we did the process of uh, pounding and uh, making those uh, balls to dry. And we have here what we can call the blue gold. And this is a very precious material we need for our work, of course. And uh, so, and the ratio to get one kilo of this dried ball, it's a minimum of a 12, uh, 10 kilos to 12 kilo of uh, fresh leaves to be able to get one kilo. So you can see the ratio, that's why it's very precious and precious and very rare. And uh, for us like gold, okay? So this is the indigo balls. And we will pound again those, uh, those balls here to be able to set the fermentation leaves vats. So this is the medium. And in this basket, you can see those beautiful uh, threads were made from um, our indigenous cotton here. We have different species. And this maybe is very heavy. And it's a long process also for to spin this cotton by drop spindles to get uh, those bobbins. And those bobbins then are taken to the traditional weavers who make those uh, narrow bands, you see. And uh, this is uh, woven on the horizontal loom, West African horizontal loom, a very specific. Uh, and, uh, and you have uh, sometimes some roll can be over 100 meters because it's on horizontal loom. 
we also use, of course, meal cutting. And this is especially what I'm doing now because we have some issues uh, weaving uh, those uh, hand spun cotton because most of the weavers are using um, a metallic beater. And uh, with this metallic beater, it breaks the, the thread when it's hand spun thread, but for the milk cotton, there is no problem. And we've been dyeing recently a uh, lot of those milk cottons to start some project with uh, the weavers. Abu Bakar, can you hear me now? We can hear you, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I was saying that uh, from the same warp, uh, white warp, and the weft used, it was, uh, we started with a light, light blue, and then when the blue was, was um, finished, it continued with a, a, dark, a dark blue. So from the same design, you can see on the same roll here, the medium indigo and then the, the dark one. And we played with a different stripe and different colors. And we have a very, very beautiful, beautiful uh, things who came out recently with the, the, so I'm showing you some of them. And we have the, our first experiment with uh, this uh, medium blue made from a hand spun. You can see this is a hand spun thread. Very beautiful. This is a medium blue and we have a dark, darker, darker one as well. Abu Bakar, because it's so difficult to weave yes. with the hand spun, how did they do it without it breaking? So that's the, the things we are working with. Uh, maybe I should go there and I can come back here after afterwards. We, we are making now with uh, Amadou, who is the, an amazing, an amazing uh, blacksmith. Uh, we just succeed to make our first uh, beater. It's not finished. And uh, you can see here Amadou working. So this is what we did mm. is um, cutting some bamboo slides. And we just made that is not finished yet. You can see this, this is the beater we need to be able to weave hand spun. And uh, this is going. This is going to Amadou. You say for Like. For hello. Hola. Amadou is saying hello to you. And Amadou is is uh, you can see making um, this beater by uh, just oh, carving the frame everything for it. Yeah. with uh, his uh, amazing tools. You know, very traditional tools. And Amadou is from a lineage of uh, blacksmiths, and is really an amazing. Um, blacksmiths who can uh, work with wood and, and, uh, and iron. So you can, uh, 
So this is supposed to come like this, you see? And this is the, the bitter. We are going to be able now to give to our weavers to, to focus more on the hand spun cotton. Yeah. And this is very gentle and very smooth for the for the hand spun threads. So this is our first first bitter. And what we have done with Amadou also is being able to make different parts of this traditional loom and um, to offer to, to the weavers. And we did also uh, some shackles and um, you can see all this is being carved by Amadou. This is a traditional pulley. This is um, really a Gogon design. And uh, this is the kind of head of the, of the, of the loom of the traditional loom. And we have, uh, we made also some beautiful shuttle and different forms. So you can see we have a very different shape here of, uh, of those uh, shuttles. And because we want to make a, a specific accent on the hand spun, Button, and we have to be able to offer those tools to the weavers. And uh, of course, um, you can see all those uh, carved beautiful pulley, you know, uh, with, their, with their bobbin to, for the thread to go up and down. And um, we have uh, many of them, of course. All different design and our weavers are going to be very happy. And this is because of the, the skill of uh, this amazing man. Can you still hear me? Yes, Hello? we can hear you okay. fine. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm moving. This is uh, what I was saying about uh, Amadou's work. And here something is happening. I can show you not everybody is comfortable with, uh, with, uh, with the camera, but here is Umu who's uh, So I'm going to introduce you Umu. Don't give it a ufu. So this is Umu working on uh, some uh, stitch resist uh, with the narrow band leaves, uh, threads, sorry, narrow band bands, cotton bands. Uh, let me find the best uh, angle for, to show you that. So the, the design been, uh, been made on the, on the, on the, on the bands by drawing the lines and then Umu will follow those lines by gathering those three lines and the stitching them together. And this technique is a part of one of the, the workshop you are doing in, in, in Seattle, I think. Yes, <coughs> in the stitch resist. <coughs> Of course, a very time consuming technique and the labor intensive. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see, maybe let me move around again. Here is maybe better. People are still hearing me? Yes. Hello? Okay. We can hear you. Okay, great. So now I'm going to Suleiman. I'm going to Suleiman who is working on, uh, on gathering those, uh, those, those threads for the tassels. Can you see? Uh, 
Are you seeing? Yeah, we can see. Yeah. Okay. Is, is uh, taking four thread by four thread by stitching like a hemming and stopping the warp threads. And then you will take off uh, the, the rest of the weft to be able to make the tassel. And here we are working on, on that and uh, you can see all this process. So Suleiman is uh, just uh, uh, stopping the, the hem, is hemming. And uh, here you can see Tumani. Yeah, to money, say hello. And uh, he's making, he's twisting the, he's finishing doing the tasseling, doing the tassels by taking a little bit of water to wet and separating the thread in four, gathered two by two, and from there, twisting them. and making the series of uh, tassels, fringes. See? And what's happening here is all those, those are the weft removed, it's getting removed to be able for others after they finish hemming, you have to remove the wefts and uh, continue making then same here with the uh, Kadia too. Making the tassel as well. You see the fringes here, the one been finished. So I think I maybe should continue with the, to see if um, I can show you the, what to say, I can show you the, the indigo vats and maybe to demonstrate with some of the dye. So look, it's a Jenny Quran now, I'm sick of. Okay, so now I'm going to the vats. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So, sorry, it's very, it's very uh, hot and sunny here. So I have some, um, Can you hear me? I can hear okay. you. Yep. Now I'm coming to the, the place where we are dying. We are going to do some dying. And, uh, and I'm going to use the, one of the very old ladies. And I'm, I'm calling them the old ladies because they are the very old vats. And uh, the, the vat I'm talking about been set uh, over a year ago by uh, one of our collaborator, one of my assistants who passed away last August, Rokia. And uh, she set uh, the vat a few months before she passed away. And uh, this is the oldest vat we have uh, in the studio now. And I would like to honor the memory of Rokia by uh, using this vat and also because this vat is giving the most amazing light blues. And um, in terms of indigo, as you know, the lightest, lightest shades are much more challenging to achieve. Uh, and especially when you have to be um, a, solid, a solid blue. 
here is uh, what I can call my pre-soaking water, hot water. And I'm going to just put some of my fabric inside. And you can see it's taking the, the water very quickly. And I'm going to help myself with, uh, with this and have some tie resist and some plain fabric. And I would like to start with the, the plain fabric to show you in the, this old vat some beautiful light blue shade. So let me make more of those in the vats. So that's the pre-soaking. As you know, we never ever go directly into a dye vat with wet, dry fabric, sorry. But we wet them always before going into. So I hope you can still hear me and uh, the coordinating, talking, and doing <laughs> what I'm doing is a bit challenging. I've never done that. And my apologies if um, I'm not so. You're doing a great job. OK, thank you. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> so now what I need to do is um, to try to put my camera on the tripe on the track. Going to try that, and it's not something easy. Let me see. So, so this is the vats, the old vats. I'm going to open. Yes, this is all these beautiful old building. So you can see the vat here? Yes, it looks beautiful. Yep. And I'm going to take a basket. The basket is uh, just to avoid my uh, long textile to touch the sediment at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I will go slowly, very slowly putting this basket in my vat to not disturb the sediment. Okay, cool. So can you still hear me? And see what's going on there? Yes. Oui. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, now I'm going to take one of the fabric. I'm, I will, I'm coming. Just a moment, sorry. So the water is hot and I need something to take the fabric from the hot water. Okay, so I'm ready with my fabric. Can you still hear me? We, yes, we can hear can you. Can you see the inside of my vats? Yeah, it looks great. I'm great going angle. with my white fabric yeah. to try to achieve 
this light blue. Okay, so the first dip should be completely, of course, immersed. And I'm working a kind of blind and trying to remove, if I can say, in oxygen from my, from my fabric and massage my fabric to try to get this even shade I will be looking for, of course. And it may take some time because my fabric is quite long. And I will try to not uh, bring the fabric outside to remain completely immersed in the liquid, the indigo liquid form, the, the indoxyl, is the liquid form of indigo before I take it out and the ring to remove the excess. Uh, liquid and through of course the oxidation process all this will turn solid and blue and that's really the, the magic the alchemy of this uh, this guy so and it's uh, very hot here and our vats are feeling great because this is really what they need, enough heat. And for the fermentation process, it's ideal. Even we are complaining, we humans, because it's, uh, it's too hot and we are expecting to have more rain now because it's uh, really, really, terribly or insanely hot. Like um, some days uh, 45 degrees. I don't know how much will be that in Fahrenheit for Cathy. I Hello, have to get Kati? my calculator out, but yes, <laughs> yeah. extremely do, hot. Do you know how much 45 degrees Celsius so would be in Fahrenheit? Probably close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Just give I an think. idea. Hold on. <laughs> If on the internet, so it's hot. That's the only thing I can. It's 113 say. It's really, really degrees. Oh my God, Fahrenheit. That's that's so too hot. Wait, I did hot. one side of my fabric, and I did turn my fabric inside, and I'm kind of massaging the second side, the other side, and of course, this is a linen fabric. Any fiber have its own limitation in terms of absorbing the liquid. And uh, I'm not especially interested in counting how many minutes I'm staying inside the vat, but I'm doing very consciously and uh, you know, methodically this massage to be sure that uh, I will come out with uh, something really, really even. So I'm almost there. Almost. And those moments also are really, uh, when you are working like that, a great moment for meditation. You know, just taking the time to To have this interaction with the fiber under your fingers, and with the dye, an amazing process. Some wind, nice breeze. So I'm almost there, and I'm going to take out this fabric from the my vat and uh, you will see also you see it's really really pale like a light yellow 
you know, and they will start oxidizing, as you can see. So the light blue is coming. You see the change. And this vat is almost 40, no, maybe 13 months now. And of course, when I work in these vats, I always do multiple immersions to get my light blue, as I was saying, is the by layering that I can get um, this solid light blue. Can you see? And this is what's really challenging because to get to to those uh, colors, those shades, it's impossible to achieve them with a young bat who would dye really, really deep blue because of the quite strong when they start the, at the beginning of their life cycle. And uh, most of the time, I would say that the skill of uh, the indigo dye in terms of uh, fermentation leaves bats is not only succeeding the recipe and making a great bats, but uh, you know, maintaining and balancing the bats and knowing the needs of your living organism, the bacteria in the, in the fermentation leaves, and to give them or to fulfill their needs. And then they can give you those beauty. And when I'm saying old ladies is a sign of respect, is not being disrespectful about so, you know, old age in our tradition and belief, this is a sign of respect because the elders, they have experience and uh, you know, they are wise, I can say that too. Okay, so let me take and show you. Oh, I couldn't tell if you were all frozen or if Abu Bakar was frozen, but it looks like he's frozen. He is frozen. You guys were all paralyzed, not moving at the same time. Because we're so fascinated. Or it's very fascinating. Let's hope uh, that yeah, he might he might rejoin us. Yeah. Um, Abu Bakar is actually hovering over this huge generator. So because they lost power earlier today okay so he'll come back. looks like he, yeah he'll be rejoining us yeah i'm watching um, can you hear me i'm so sorry what yes well there you are so <laughs> my my iphone is too hot and um, uh it is, uh, what he's saying that it's too hot the temperature went too high and it was off so i have to reconnect with my iphone again <laughs> so, sorry about that that's okay. Um, yeah. So you did see a bit what I was doing or not so finally because I don't. Oh, no, we saw it. We saw everything oh, yeah. all the way so up it... to where you were hanging the textile. Okay. So I'm going to reconnect with my, my iPhone again. It's really too hot here. Yeah. So the iPhone is getting crazy because of the, the heat. So. Amy, can you see my uh, iPhone again? Okay, just a moment. There oh, it is. Yeah, it just came back. Okay, okay. got it. Wonderful. Yeah, let me So I will try again. Okay. If, hey, Abu Bakar, if it, if it overheats, 
just come yeah. back to your uh, laptop and, and my computer. Okay. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. Okay. Kathy, do you see his other camera? I mean, I know we've let him in, but I do. You, do uh, you see? I see him right here. I mean, I see Abu Bakr, but this one. Hold on, let me get rid of the other one. I don't know. Do I need to co-host that one? Here yes. Yeah. Okay, so I co-hosted it. I don't know where it is. Do you see it? There, there's two. If you look under participants. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see that, but I just don't Hello? see where it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Okay. So spot it. Here yeah. is. I don't know if you see it the way I see that blue. It's very, very, very light, like a kind mm -hmm. of icy baby blue. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is that your blue of nothingness? No, it's not the blue of nothingness. The blue of nothingness will be achieved the really at the end of this, the life cycle. So, but this is more like, uh, you know, the living blue, as we will call it, Bara mm. Nonokene or icy baby blue. But uh, if I go ideally to, to get a very strong light blue, I can go for a minimum four dips or to six dips to get uh, something really solid being more or less um, in, um, in, in this kind of, uh, kind of shade. So to make the difference between uh, those two, what I can do, I can go maybe in a stronger vat and do a first dip of this plain color and you will see the difference um, with this icy baby blue to just have uh, this understanding. So I'm moving with my tripod and my uh, basket to go to another vats. So let me bring that first. And also you can see the difference by the quality of the, the quality of the, the foam, sorry. This is quite young vats. And you see the purplish shade of, 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 the, of the flower. Yeah. That shows the complete the difference. Um, so I'm going to use that one now, and I'm going to bring my tripod to set um, the camera in front of this one. Okay, let me close that one. Okay, let's see. Sorry. So, is that okay? Yeah, that looks good. You can good. see the inside of the vat. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, I'm bringing my basket in. Abu Bakar, what was swimming in the vat? You probably can't hear me. Yeah, he can't hear you. I was because wondering. Because of the same thing. It might be it was a bug. Yeah, I think there were a couple of bugs. They're probably bright blue. Okay, good. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes, Abu Bakar. I'm with my family. What is happening? <laughs> um, 
Hey, Kathy. Here I am. Did you just did you just see that somebody's whiteboard was trying to load? I see something here. How do I get out of that? Oh, maybe it's me. Uh, it's a, uh, there. Melanie Price. Okay. Now, this is a young bat. I'm going to do one dip in this one, and we will check in the the first one the difference. I have to go through the same process, Mass massaging gently and well all over the both sides. Are you there? Yes, we are here. No question at the moment. Uh, we don't have the question. We Hello? don't have any. We don't have the questions open right now. We're just watching what you're doing. Do you are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, Abu Bakr, we yes. can hear you. OK. Kathy, do you want me to open the chat for some questions? Um. Or should we just yeah, let's go ahead that? and put the questions in and then we'll ask him once he's back at the um, computer because he won't be able to hear us in the, the die studio. OK, I just open it up if you guys have questions to put in there. And if everyone's OK, we'll probably run a few minutes over. Um, I can't I can't really hear you now. <laughs> but, um, I'm just finishing that and I will. Uh, the okay. whiteboard uh, error message is still up, it says. Okay. Do you see uh, it? I got rid of it. So um, I'm doing the other side. I don't know. I, I don't see it anymore. Just click cancel and it will go away. That's what I did. Yeah. If you have a whiteboard. Just get rid of it. And let's hope this isn't the day we get Zoom bombed. <laughs> With a whiteboard? Oh my With goodness. A, I don't know how these things start. Okay. And we'll ask questions after you guys because he can't really hear us right now. Okay, so I'm taking this outside. You can see how green are this one with oxidation because it's much stronger than that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It, it could be that his phone is overheating again, I'm you guys. Sure. So yeah. oh. we, he may drop uh, the call just because it's too hot there.
Yeah. Yeah. I think melt down. The, the phone's going to melt. But you can see how dark it is. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so dark. Yeah. I have a feeling that Abu Bakr is going to just suddenly show up in front of that. The camera. other computer. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can certainly take questions. Yeah, I think we should do that once his, yeah, once his camera comes back on. Uh, oh, there's a lot of questions. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. That's him. Oh. oh. Uh, it's trying. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's watch. Right. Yep. You know, the exciting thing is that we're in Bamako. We're in Mali right now watching this from our homes all over the world. But um, yeah, the beauty of technology and he'll come back and we'll go back there. Kathy, did you uh, want to say anything about his classes while we're while I'm? Wait, oh, while sure. I'm so yeah, we have. Um, we didn't get a chance to see the mineral mud dyeing, but it's a tannin uh, iron process, and we're working on traditional finimugu this year. Um, I think we we've allocated more fabric so that people can do a, additional designs, and we're also going to be using both. Uh, the Angalama, which is the traditional Malian uh, yellow tannin that um, he uses with his mineral mud, as well as the, um, is he back? He is. Okay. Uh, as well as we're going to be using Cherry Ops Tagal, which is a uh, native of Indonesia. And uh, we're going to see, because it gives a reddish color, very similar to another type of tannin that they use in Mali, but that particular tannin is now endangered. So we're pretty excited about that. And then the stitched resist workshop is going to be going through very specific stitching um, techniques that are used in Mali and in West Africa that uh, Abu Bakr has incorporated into his workshop. And then the woven fabric that you saw um, is also going to be available as part of the six day kimono construction workshop. So we hope that one of those is appealing to you. And we'd love to see you at one of those workshops here in Seattle. And all the information is on our website. There's actually a menu that says Abu Bakar uh, Artists in Residence. And if you click on that, you get all the details. Okay. Did you find them? Um, uh, I see his other camera, but I don't, See, maybe we lost him again. I'm not sure. Okay. So um, yeah. I can answer a few of these questions that are in chat because hmm. I know we're at the top of the hour here. Um, Helen asked, what's his source of sugar? So he's using, um, I'm pretty sure he's using wheat bran as some of the part of the fermentation that he's doing with his particular indigo vats. And he may also have another native uh, indigenous sugar source. And then Elaine was asking what happens when the fabric touches the sediment. So the sediment causes uh, irregularity in the dye coverage and it, it makes streaks and, and marks that sometimes people don't want. Um, so that you try to avoid putting, getting the textile into the bottom of the vat. Um, so people will use a basket or sometimes they'll put a colander in the bottom of their indigo vats to protect it. Uh, Janice asked, is the cotton, spun cotton single ply? Yes, it's all, it's all spindle spun and it's all singles that he's using for Fini Mugu. Uh, Michelle asked, is he in Mali or is he in 
Seattle. So he's in Mali now, and he'll be coming to Seattle um, on July 1st. And then our workshops start on July 13th. Um, Jack, Jacqueline asked, was the old light blue vat originally a dark vat? Yes, it was as dark as the vat he was just um, working in and it got lighter and lighter and lighter as he used it. He said he was using it for since August of last year. And it was one of the last vats that was made by his assistant, Rokia, who passed away last year. So I think he has a lot of attachment to it. Oh, uh, hold on, I got them. Okay. I think we're just going right to... Uh, I think I'm going to take my computer there. To show I you. think uh, maybe you want to just answer some que questions. Kathy's been answering some questions and there's okay. a lot. Is, is there questions for me? Oh, there's so oh, many. So many. So <laughs> many. <laughs> so <laughs> many. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you let your phone cool down a little bit. So yes, I let my phone get cool, cooler and then I will connect again with the phone. I can show you the final work. Yes, sorry. Okay. Kathy, I don't okay, know where Amy, you were. take it away. I oh, was just great. kind of skipping along the ones that I... Okay, okay. Um, um, okay yeah. I see where you're at. I see where you're um, so, Abu Bakr, does the, does the younger leaves of indigo have more dye content? Yes. Only the younger leaves for this species, for the Philoneptera species, only the younger leaves contain the chemical compound, or how you say, chemical component, chemical compound. The, the, the hard leaves, the old leaves, doesn't contain anything. I mean, not any dye stuff, really. Only the young leaves contain the, the, the substance, the, the, you know, the indigo precursor. Okay. Does the container affect the indigo at all, the plastic versus clay or concrete when you put that basket in? It, it needs to be a neutral material. I mean, you, you could, uh, I will avoid using uh, any like uh, iron or, you know, to set a, a vat or aluminum that can, that can affect, but uh, stainless, uh, and plastic is a neutral material and it's really respectful for the process. So yeah, I avoid this. Some people even use wood, you know, like, uh, so yeah, the, mm -hmm. the material can affect, for example, some dyes, uh, if you use a, a iron container when you are going, I mean, now we are talking about indigo, but I think it's, it's better to avoid. But if you use, for example, uh, tannin in those material, it will be really, really mm. uh, super reaction. So yeah, to avoid and use a stainless, for example. Yeah. Okay. Uh, during multiple dips, do you dry the fabric and then massage the fabric each time? No, we don't need the, to dry the fabric at all. As the oxidation process is over, you can go right back to do a second immersion and then take out and oxidize again and go. It's not, uh, for me, the number of time you are staying inside, or some people said also that you need to dry the fabric. You know, the fiber have, uh, as I was saying, any fiber has its own limitation, but the oxidation, oxidation process uh, is visible with your eyes. When it's done, you can go back into the vat again. It doesn't, you don't need the fabric to be dry and for, to go for another immersion. Okay. Uh, can you talk about how you made those indigo balls? How I make the indigo balls? Yes. Uh, the indigo balls are made by, um, how do you say, um, uh, collecting the leaves, harvesting the leaves, and then uh, pounding them with, uh, in a big uh, mortar and pestle to, to reduce the mass and to have uh, this paste, and then you, you, you make uh, this ball form from the, the wet paste. And you don't need to add anything because the, the leaves are really fresh and tender. The sap itself uh, is enough to make, uh, to make that happen. So there is no extra 
any extra thing added in, in this uh, process. It's just pounding and uh, making the ball from the, the fresh leaves. Okay. Um, there's a bunch of people who are asking about the vats themselves, if they're constructed from clay or wood. Or those I have here are those uh, clay structures. So maybe I should move with my computer instead of... Uh, oh. I don't know if the computer will also... The computer is also super hot for so maybe. Let's yeah, try. Abu Bakr, yeah, it might okay. overheat. So, yeah. and we're we're we have about five more minutes. So okay, we have about five more minutes. Yeah. So I'm going to try to to connect again, and uh, with my my iPhone, and uh, it's a bit cool now. Maybe it will work. Let's see. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not yeah. enough. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. Yes, the structure of my vats, most of them are in clay. It's just uh, because uh, sometimes it's, uh, I have uh, 10 vats of 350 liters. And uh, sometimes when I'm, I, I, I need to make extra vats, I can, I can take a plastic container because, um, you know, more vats you have, better it is, and especially when you come to production. And uh, when you have a big production, because you cannot use all your vats at the same time, and you will have to, the vat you are using in one day, uh, that day you will, uh, at the end of your day work, if you, if you did use like a two or three vats in the same day, you will leave those ones I mean, you will feed them you, to rebalance the, the, the pH uh, if they are really tired, to give them some fermenting agents uh, like, uh, you know, uh, honey, this is really luxury, or you can give them a uh, tamarind pulp or, you know, uh, mango pulp or even uh, crushed banana. And then you will let those ones two, three days to give them the time to regenerate. And if you have to work the next day, you will use another series of vats. You won't use the same you have used. So, and that's why it's uh, always better to have multiple vats to be able, in terms of uh, you know professional pro professionalism, to be able to produce every single day without so uh, harming and exhausting most of the vats. So, more vats you have, better it is because you have much more possibility every single day to, to do a little bit more of work. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting question here from Gail Trotter. Can Gail's wondering if you can show like what your hands are doing with the fabric when it's in the vat, but just show it just like what we show it with your hands right now. Could you like what it so would? The only way to show doing... that is uh, for me to go back in the clear water, <laughs> and uh, then you can see my hand. I can't show it while I'm doing inside the vat because uh, I will. Uh, I will bring trouble to my uh, fabric. But uh, yeah, this is something I can show, but in, um, in a clear water, maybe you yeah. can- uh, Or so can... if they could come to Seattle and they could see you do oh, it yes. in real life. <laughs> that will be the best way, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so that will be the best way. So let me try to, to connect again with my, uh, my phone quickly and then, uh, I will uh, I will show you that. I'm happy to show that. Okay. And, uh, Do you want me to keep asking questions, or you want me to just? Yes. While you are, I'm doing that, you can keep asking questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're gonna start being like me, doing three things at once, and yeah. Only okay. Does squeezing the fabric at the end introduce oxygen into the vat when you're squeezing Sorry? the? Does when you're squeezing the fabric, the I and the indigo is going back in. When I'm, I'm squeezing the fabric before going in the vat or after going in the vat? When you're, when you're taking it out of the vat and you're squeezing yes. it, is yeah. it introducing oxygen back into the vat? No, no. I mean, this, uh, if you had uh, a specific movement by splashing in, 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 in and out of the vat, yes, there you, you, you are damaging uh, the vat, you are bringing oxygen into it, but the way by just taking it out, no, you are not so bringing any, any, um, anything in the vat at that time. Yeah. So 
I'm going back to, to yeah. show you because I have a it's cool now. No, mute that one. Okay. Now where did oh there's Abu Bakr. Okay, hold on. There you are. <laughs> I just kept to keep finding you. Oh, hold on. Oh, wow. Abu Bakr, are you t are you talking right now? You, sorry, I'm saying that it will be impossible to achieve this uh, light blue in uh, any uh, young vat. So this is one dip in a, a young vat, as you can see. You can see the difference between both of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is one dip in all the vats. So, you know, they are all different. They are different, but they are both beautiful. But uh, to come to, to achieve those light shades, only all the vats can give you that. It's impossible to, to achieve that with any young, uh, young vats. So I'm going to, so you can see the difference. Both one dip, but in a very different vats. I'm going now to show the movement, how I'm massaging the, the fabric. And uh, let me try to be as close as possible. And uh, then you can see. The movement. Okay. Yeah. I'm bringing my fabric. Wait a minute. Oh, you're bringing your fabric to this? Or are you in a different vat of water? So here oh. is the movements. This is in the water. We can do like if it was the, the indigo vat. So the movement is this, by massaging your fabric, you see, gently, slowly, and going ahead and go through all the lengths of your, of your fiber. This is the, the way of massaging. I don't know if you can see clearly. This is how- It's very so, clear, like, yes. It is, yeah. You massage like this, like this. You see? Yeah, I see. So, and then taking, moving the fabric ahead like this. So this is what I'm doing under in my liquid like this. And uh, at the end of my fabric, here is the end of my fabric. I will just turn and continue again the process in the other side, like this. Okay. Okay. All right, Amy. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, it's, it's 15 after. Was that clear enough? That was. Yes, Abu Akkar, that was amazing. Thank okay. you. So, okay. Other questions? Let's see. Uh, um, well, there was a question I had earlier that somebody was asking about what, what the pH of your vats are. Okay, so I'm going to quit on my computer. I'm coming. Okay, let me go back. Oh. You're muted. Uh, hold on, hold on. Where is he, Kathy? He's right here on his desktop. Can you unmute him? I, I can't see him. I see him right here. Do you want me to spotlight him? Yes. Oh, I see him now, but yep. <laughs> we can't hear you. You can hear me now? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. 
<laughs> okay, let's take a couple more questions and then uh, because it's yeah. almost 20 after the hour, we'll okay. wrap up. And then, uh, of course, we want to announce all the workshops that you're doing, not only in Seattle, but in other places as well. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, yes, I am seeing all thank yous. I saw I'm down to the bottom where I shouldn't be. Um, so, yes. Okay, how about um, this one? What do you, somebody's asking, what do you use in your fermentation vats? And thank you for showing us your studio, says Margarita. What, what I'm uh, using in my fermentation vats? Yes. I'm using indigo leaves. I'm using lye water, like wood ash lye water as alkali to get to my uh, desired pH, like 10.5 to 11. Of course, I'm using, uh, 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 how do you call it, um, lime to, to as balance so for the alkali. Uh, what else I'm using? I'm using, uh, wheat bran porridge. I'm using uh, tamarind pulp. Uh, I'm feeding with a fermented, fermented agent, many different ones, depending the season. Uh, I was saying that um, you can even feed with honey, but it's really luxury. It's not happen all the time. But uh, yeah, this is uh, what I'm using in my, uh, in my fermentation vats, of course. And uh, very uh, good quality water, like uh, that's very important. We have a well here. We are not using uh, tap water because the tap water is treated with, uh, you know, some uh, chemicals, and we never use any tap water, even with the rinsing of our fiber, unless it's uh, the final rinsing, and then we use uh, tap tap water. And we are very careful of uh, of those things because uh, the environment in the vat is uh, super sensitive. And you have to be very careful to not bring any, any, how can I say, strange things to damage your vat or to kill the bacteria. So the living organism. So yeah, this is, a, is that alkali, indigo leaves, good water, and uh, a lots of attention and love for, the, for our living organism. Mm. So this is the key or this is the key for to grow healthy and strong uh, vats, yeah. Okay. Well, I think, Kathy, do you, do you want to? Yeah, just, let's, let's, uh, um, glasses and let's wrap up. I know yeah. it's boiling hot in Bamako. I know, I know, I feel bad. <laughs> and uh, Abu Bakr, we were so lucky because we did not hear the generator. Never. We didn't hear the mosque. Yeah, so that was a, a kind of, uh, big mess and uh, when I came to the vats uh, we had the power of, came up oh. and I did switch off the generator because okay. I could not hear you. Uh, oh I see. The generator yeah. was there. Well thank you so, for doing uh, that. This is uh, yeah you know in our place it happened that the power is, uh, is off and then we have to find solutions yeah. and that's why you know <laughs> technology in those places not working always the, the best way. Mm -hmm. And you can see the, the iPhone with the, can overheat and uh, just uh, and just uh, get off. So, so this really- Oh, but it was so special. Oh, it was gosh, really, yeah. really- Yeah, so I've never done that. And my apologies for not be super coordinate and, and on my movement and doing several things at the same time. When you have free hand, it's much easier than holding a, an iPhone and then trying to do more things yeah. but uh yes um thank you for having me of course and i'm uh, sure. for the first time i have uh, shared my uh, my uh, the life in my studio with uh, my people and uh, it doesn't happen often i mean it was the first time so i hope uh, it was okay and, it was uh, fantastic it was not too messy i would say no it was no great. not it was at all it was Perfect. really great especially yeah. when you were on the roof picking indigo that was pretty funny. I was terrified, um, but yeah, we were scared, but I'm glad it all turned out yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> so let me just conclude with a few things. Um, yeah. So, you know, okay. we had a bit of a cold open this time. We didn't have our theme song, we didn't have the music, the dancers, <laughs> but we had this wonderful 
experience of Abu Bakr harvesting indigo. So that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, just a few things is that, uh, first of all, I, I uh, wanted to actually talk about something a bit more serious. Um, yeah. I want to apologize for something that I said last week that was actually offensive to those who are experiencing uh, anything to have to do with the prison system or imprisonment in the United States and probably everywhere. Uh, I was joking about Amy's hotel room looking like a prison and made some comments and uh, did not realize that it was quite offensive to people who are, have this um, experience yeah. or have been involved in that. And so clearly I have a blind spot about this and I just wanted to apologize and say that was not intended, but I completely understand how people would be um, upset about that. And of course, we're going to look at that in a completely different way and not speak about it again. Yes. Um, because it is a tragedy uh, all over the world, the way that uh, we treat those who are imprisoned. So I blew it. I'm sorry, but we are going to get better at this and educated and more aware. Um, the other thing is that for next week, uh, really, we're going to take a break, but we're hoping to have our 100th episode of Feedback Friday. Don't say uh, it is. Don't say I'm not going to say who it is because we haven't confirmed that person yet. But if we do get that person, it'll be super exciting. So I'm, gonna, I'm uh, we're waiting. Them. We're waiting <laughs> with we'll bated breath to see. For that. Uh, thank you. It's going <laughs> to yeah. be great. And then, of course, these workshops. We really, really want to see you in Seattle. Um, we still have openings in Mineral Mud. We have openings in the stitching workshop where you're going to learn traditional stitched techniques. And of course, in the kimono workshop, um, Abu Bakr is actually bringing some of that um, dalifini, is it called? Dalifini, dalifini yes, yes. Dalifini, the, the new fabric that he's having developed. Oh, so hold on. Let me, let me yeah, me. that stuff is coming with it. Oh, good. Show it again, so, Abu Bakr. Oh yeah, my God. Many of yeah. them. There is, uh, so yeah. Oh. <laughs> so oh, this boy. is like so rare for us to be able to experience this. I'm very excited. Yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. So then somebody just mentioned about the mosque. Yeah. Actually, Abu Bakr mentioned that. So I was just confirming with him that we didn't hear the call. Sorry. Somebody when you know when we speak about the mosque being, you're next door to a mosque, and so sometimes the call to prayer. Is ah, the mask. and you were asking yeah. about it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you did hear it at the. At the I heard beginning? it at the be. I heard it at the we beginning. We heard it at the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 It just adds to. Yeah, it was the authenticity the of of the place. <laughs> of yes. the place. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Thank you very much, everyone. Other than that, we can all say hello and. Uh, goodbye, Abu Bakr. Again, our deepest thanks and gratitude so much. for Thank sharing you. with us. It was incredible to see everyone at work and the amazing works that are happening with the community that you support in Bamako and also on your farm. Yes. So oh. next time, maybe we can try at the farm if the connection is good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The harvest I did here was a very small one compared to what we can do really at the farm because, uh, you know, of course, I'm surrounded uh, with the plants all over, but uh, the really harvest is always happening um, at the farm, not uh, in the studio here. So thank you, everyone. And uh, as I have said, uh, there is Seattle in terms of workshop. This year, for many years, I have started also, I'm going to have a series of workshops in, in France. Uh, and then uh, next year in uh, Indonesia is the Thread of Life Bali, and then in um, in uh, in Australia also. But uh, you know, so those all those uh, will be on my Instagram. Will be uh, announcing on my Instagram. And I thank everyone for being part of this uh, this gathering. And um, so all the best to everyone. And uh, I hope to see some of you uh, in a few weeks in um, in the U.S. in Seattle. And uh, all the best to everyone. And thank you. Thank you so much, Abu Bakar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Impressive. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merci <laughs> Nimali <laughs> I'm I'm assuming everybody knows each other here. <laughs> Translating. So this is a great thing because we have, um, you know, kind of joke between a different cultural group. And she's saying she's a Fulani and uh, Amadou is, uh, is a Dogon. In uh, our ancestors have those pacts uh, where they could be, could be uh, the, how can I say, have assistance one to another. And we are always playing and joking like that. And the Fulani are known as being a shepherd and always making uh, enough milk and things like that. <laughs> and uh, and um, Amadou is asking her to bring the milk and he, he will bring the milk, you know, so yep. she's proposing to bring the milk. And, and I said it was his fault that it was hot in Mali because he's lighting a fire, whereas there is 45 yeah. degrees. 113 so in fire. Yeah. Milk, he, yeah. They just would die, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have flam so katara. Go come, 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 That's amazing. I'm, I'm so touched by, uh, by that. This is really, really wonderful to hear from an like this in this group. Those, I'm really, really touched. Thank you so much for sharing uh, this. Um, yeah, and thank you. It, it's, so nostalgic Mali because it's become too dangerous to go there as a white person. No. Um, white have, outside I have, only, I have you to know. Stop you, I have to stop you by saying that it's never been too dangerous as a white person to be in Mali. And the danger and all the harm is done to the Malian. Okay. Thank so, you. And, yes. uh, it's yes. very important yes. to, to, to yes. acknowledge that all the, the harm done to the Malian are done by uh, our, our colonial power, who's France, who's making trouble in this country because they just want to get our resources for nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, every white person is most welcome in Mali because uh, we, as you have noticed uh, by your experience being in this country, how friendly and how kind are those people are the, the Malians? So oh, that's there is not no what I meant. Here. I apologize. It's really not no, what I meant. Fine, I was speaking about terrorism. You know, it's important yeah. that people know what's happening in our country. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm we have no problem with white any white person. No, I, I really apologize, but I have to put this right. Uh, it's just because of terrorism, a current you know, terrorism. You know who are the terrorists? The terrorists are those who. Who, who, how can I say, who created that and are funding it? And the reason yes, they're creating and funding that, this is very important. No African country is manufacturing weapons, okay? And how you can explain to me why there is always conflict in those countries? Those who are manufacturing weapons and they need 
to, 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 to make trouble in some places or conflict for, and to be able to sell their weapons, okay? And it's not Malian who are manufacturing weapons. And this uh, terrorism or jihadism is coming from those who have interest to make that happen. And then, and because uh, when uh, people are fighting, they always can have their military presence to pretend that they are coming to save, and in, uh, mm -hmm. pretending they are saving, coming to save. And what the only thing they are interested in is the resources. You know, this country is uh, is amazingly rich in terms of resources. We have uh, gas, we have we have uh, we have uh, oil, we have we have gold, we have everything in this uh, in this place. You know, from my from what I know, France doesn't have any gold mine, mm. but still France have uh, over. 2,500 tons of gold in the Bank de France as a reserve. Mm -hmm. And they don't mm -hmm. produce any. The same with oil. Total, this company total, there is no oil production in France, but there are, there are total uh, station are all over those countries. So we, every, every foreigner are most welcome in this country. But what the, the mass of the, the, the press is saying is completely lies mm -hmm. towards those people who are struggling, who are fighting to just get their sovereignty. You know, it's been 60 years. They said we are independent after they, I'm not even talking about uh, all the African enslaved in the United States. Slavery is one thing, but the colonialism. And uh, in the 60s, they said that Africans uh, have their independence but still, you know, they continue to rule our country by being, you know, absent because the neo-colonialism is the one who's uh, creating the most harm to those countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm really sad, you know, and my situation is very uh, kind of complex because I'm French and I'm Malian. It's like I have two mother and uh, one who birthed me and another one who ra raised me. But I cannot, uh, if any of them abuse me, I will call her out. And yeah. this is exactly what's happening. Yeah. You know, I won't, I won't uh, let things be said in that way that uh, it's dangerous here. It's not dangerous here. It's because they are just, they are making our life nightmare because uh, they want our resources. This mm -hmm. nothing. And they don't want us, they don't want <clears throat> Africans to get developed. You know, they try that, you know, always trying to maintain us in this uh, extreme poverty while we are we are sitting on gold and we have to continue begging. So this is a nonsense. But uh, in Mali, what's happening? Malian are um, running this revolution because enough is enough. Mm -hmm. you know? Good. Mm. I just mm. wanted to apologize because my that was no, not at all it's what I meant to say. I mean, I, I think it's I'm it's a amazing like... things you have said for me because it's very important. While people are still there, maybe they can understand me. You know, saying those things. You know, don't you no need to apologize. You know, you you say from your what you have in your hand. Maybe where you are, they are saying uh, this Malaysia. Of course, if you go to any diplomatic side, the embassy, they are saying, don't go to Mali, it's too dangerous. No. It's completely wrong. I'm, no. I'm traveling to Mali since 30 years and I'm German. So I'm feeling very much mixed up between feeling very much, very close to Mali in my heart, living in France and being German, being always treated as French. So it's, I feel a bit like you torn into pieces and I know what it, is when you're in the street, I have students, you know, who have, who, who are descendants from Malian second generations, and yeah. they are being treated like black people here. They are being, say they are being treated like white people there. And I feel when I go there that I'm treated like an equal, like Malian among my friends. Mm -hmm. and. As soon as I go into a part of the city where people don't know me, obviously I'm white. And that's just that I used to go to a small village, Dukuna, near Segu, for since 30 years. And yeah. they, the people of the village, just told me that's not, it's not my opinion. I am 100% 
agreeing on what you say. I feel the same thing. So you know, I just well, wanted to make clear this. <laughs> yes. No, no, it, <laughs> I'm I, not I, on this it's, side. It's just it's that people very, from the village say, don't come. It's, it's not what it used to be. And you would be unhappy. And we, we are afraid that some, you get some harm. <laughs> well, of people course, from the people village would always me. try to protect you by saying such things as well. But what I mean, you know, Europe are more, more subject to terrorism and on all this than even here. Because, uh, you know, it, it's uh, Paris, I think for me, is much more dangerous or London mm. uh, than, uh, than Bamako. And uh, because uh, even the United States with all this mass shooting, you yeah. know, we, mm. we, this is a kind of phenomenon we don't have. When you say it's dangerous, I think from, from recent, this last month, what all this mass shooting we have seen in the United States is really dangerous, you know? And uh, <laughs> so, you, you, you know, it's completely, you have to, Relative, I don't know how to say that, but mm -hmm. uh, of course I understand if uh, people from the village are, are telling you the thing is also there is that reality that uh, those colonial power came and completely destabilized this uh, place, uh, this country uh, since uh, I mean ten years ago it, that started. But it's the most peaceful country, the most uh, yeah. you know you, humanity has the value of you, what really humanity is really in those countries. But of course, all that's happening, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, we know who are responsible of that. It's not, uh, it's, it's absolutely not the population you, you have met, uh, you have seen, it's just uh, things won't go to them in, in a very, very terrible way. But anyway, so it's, it's good that we can get to talk about, uh, about those things as well. And of, of course, me hearing that, I cannot let that said because uh, I, uh, I'm in between both two, I'm, I'm coming back and forth. And uh, I would say Europe or Western country are much more dangerous than, uh, than, than being here, definitely. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Interesting. so you will probably hear the opposite because the, 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 the newspaper are saying completely the opposite. You know, don't yes. go there. It's 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 a nightmare. It's, it's dangerous. Is this? Is that? But so, They've yeah. always said that. I think. Yeah. Anywhere it's strange. And we keep saying that because we know why, what their interests, what they want. You know. So yeah. this is this is yeah. really a pity. But uh, I think someone like me, when I have an interaction with you, I should also talk about my my what I'm I'm. Um, I'm experiencing here on my vision of the situation. And uh, if you, of course, uh, you can hear me or not hear me, but this is exactly what's happening. That's and what it's about. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, Abu Bakar. Yeah. Amazing discussion and important, I, yeah. super important. Mm -hmm. right. But we are going to say goodbye for now. And yes, I would love sorry. to keep the, the comment. No, 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 sorry. please. No, sorry. No. Yeah, no, sorry. This is super, super yeah, important. Absolutely. I think that we, there are many, many layers that are being yeah. exposed, and yeah. we just need to keep talking about them. So yeah. um, I just want to say thank you again. I can't yeah. wait to see you in a few weeks. Okay, thank and, you uh, as well. Thank you, Amy. Yeah. Thank you, Kathy, Abu Bakr. I'm gonna see you, and I'm gonna see you in real life finally after three years, yeah, or, or, or actually more <laughs> years than that. But. Yeah, we've been only, uh, you know, meeting each other through this uh, virtual last. I mean, yes. Yeah. So yes. So I'm gonna give you a big hug, and I hope you're gonna be okay with that. Okay. Big hug. Yeah, too. he's good with that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, everyone. Bye. Back Thank on. you. I appreciate Bye. it. Bye. 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 Bye.